Hey everyone, Brian Matias here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take this photo that I took at Cannon Beach and using Lightroom, turn it into this photo. Now, before we get into the technical edits, here's the thing. Uh, if you ask most photographers, hey, when ideally would you like to photograph? Uh, usually I bet you'd hear one of two answers, maybe three, either they'll say sunrise, sunset, or both. But the way that I see it is if you're a photographer, the answer to that question should be anytime. And a lot of times, listen, I know if it's like, you know, 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. and the sun's right above you and there are no clouds in the sky, it's um, it's just not fun to shoot. But the fact of the matter is that there's actually a lot that you can do even in those harsh weather conditions. And that's exactly why uh, I want to use this photo. Just the other day, I went to Cannon Beach, which is on the Oregon coast with uh, Nicole and my sister who was visiting. And... I took this photo and it's, you know, it's a pretty straightforward shot. I used a 10 stop neutral density filter and shot it at 30 seconds. So you have that really, really glassy kind of surface. You almost don't even see the, the water in the foreground, which I like. I think that gives it a really nice effect. But just because the sun was above me, it was like around 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was, it was actually really nice uh, weather-wise because in Portland, it was approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit. On the coast, it was around 67 degrees and breezy. But as you can see, the light was still really harsh. So with that, there is no excuse. Even if it's poor light, you should still grab your camera. You should still get out there. And what I want to do is use this video to give you just one example of what you can do, how you can use post-processing, in this case, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, to, to get a cool result, even though, again, the lighting conditions were harsh. Now, uh, we're gonna jump over to the computer in a second, and I'm also gonna show you how you can download a free Adobe Creative Profiles pack. I created a, a five pack, it has five profiles, giving it away for free. Uh, I'll show you how you, you can get it, super easy, and we're gonna use one of those profiles to edit. So with that, let's jump over to the computer and I will show you how I edited this photo using one of those Creative Profiles and some Creative Color Masking. All right, so here we are in front of the computer and I've got the photo opened right here in Lightroom Classic CC. Now, um, before we start anything, let's just look at the photo here. So uh, if we look at some of the EXIF, you can see that this was taken with, uh, it was with an A7R Mark III Sony and my 1635 millimeter F2.8 GM. And I shot it at 30 seconds at, at F18 with a 10 stop neutral density filter. Now, again, like I mentioned, it was super bright out and uh, if I didn't have an ND filter, especially a 10 stop uh, and a circular polarizer, I wouldn't have been able to expose for 30 seconds because there's just simply too much light. The exposure would have been blown way out. So because I was able to get uh, the 30 second exposure, you can see I have the, the waves just kind of turn into this mist, which I love. And you can see the sand. You can see over here people uh, walking around. Now this is Haystack Rock at Cannon Beach. It's one of the kind of most famous landmarks in the area. And on this particular day, uh, there were a decent number of people, but it wasn't too bad. So with that, you know, this is pretty much straight out of camera here. You can see all of the settings are untouched. First thing I'm gonna do is scroll down and let's add one of those uh, lens profiles to just, you know, get rid of a little bit of that distortion and the vignette from the lens. So it's nice and clean over here. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, up the white point just a little bit. I'm kind of looking at the histogram right here and drop the black point. This adds a little bit of contrast to the scene and it brings out more of the tonality of the photo. There is so much information in any one of these raw files that might as well take advantage of it. So I mentioned in the intro that we're gonna use uh, a creative profile. Now, uh, Adobe released creative profiles not too long ago. Uh, with one of their more recent versions of Adobe uh, Lightroom Classic CC and Lightroom CC. And the benefit to it is that you can apply uh, looks without adjusting any of the sliders. They're kind of like presets, but they're like meta presets. And you can access them by clicking on this little uh, thumbnail button here under the profile section in develop. And so here are the categories. And um, I mentioned that I built a pack of five profiles that I'm giving away for free. You can see them right here if you hover over them, uh, which is one of the nice things I like that as you hover over the thumbnails, you can see previews of them. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I really like nature tone number five, so I'm gonna select it here. 
Now, when you select a profile, you'll have this amount slider and by default, it'll be at 100%. And like, uh, you know, most other presets and other applications, you can control the opacity. This is zero, which means there's nothing. But unlike other apps, you can actually go crazy and go to 200%, which is a bit much. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I'm gonna keep it at around 105%. Uh, that's, you know, that's looking good here. And I'll hit close to uh, close that profile browser. Now you can see how the profile fundamentally changed the look of the photo. If I show you the uh, original and then with the profile, just applying the profile is great. I'm going to do a few more things though. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. Uh, I'm also going to drop the black point just a little bit, uh, and add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance. Now here's the thing. I want to add a little bit of warmth to the foreground and to the sun, but I only want to apply it to the areas here where the sunlight would be hitting the sand, which is these bright areas here. You can see around here on the left and on the right, there's a little bit of reflection from the blue sky. And of course there's the blue sky over here. So there's a really cool way to do this. I'm going to select the graduated filter over here. Let's, um, press the option or alt key, and you can see that that changes uh, the effects button to reset, which will reset all the settings. Now, this is how I typically use a graduated filter. Um, I need to know where that filter is being applied. So first thing I'll do is I'll open up the exposure here, and then I will drag down. And you can see, there, now I'm not looking to brighten the photo here, but because the exposure is up, it shows me where the effect is gonna be applied. So mostly up here. Uh, now I'm gonna go, hit the option or alt key again, press reset. The mask is still here, but none of the effects are applied. So what I wanna do is uh, take the temperature slider. Remember I said I wanna warm it. So you can see it adds a really nice warm color to it, but it's applying that warm tone everywhere, which I don't really want. I really wanna be selective with uh, where I apply that effect. So what I'm gonna do is go to the range mask. So with the range mask here, I have two options, color and luminance. Luminance will allow me to control uh, based on light, but color will allow me to specify specific colors of where I want the mask to be applied to. So I'm gonna take that drop right here and I'm gonna click right there. And then if I press and hold, actually, before I do that, notice how, here, let me undo that. See how the effect is applied everywhere, but once I click right there, the mask will only apply to areas within that color region. You can see how we've already restored some of that color, which is awesome. And if I press and hold the shift key, you can see a little plus icon. And what that allows me to do is sample multiple colors. So I can really refine where I uh, get that mask. And as you add more colors, it makes the mask that much more, uh, you know, closer to the colors that you want to apply to. Now, there's also an amount slider here. And what I'm gonna do is press and hold the option key or alt key if you are on Windows and start dragging. And you can see here, what this is doing is uh, the more to the left that I go, the pickier it's gonna be with the colors. And if I let go, you can see, watch, um, you, you'll get that kind of preview over here. And then as I go to the right, it becomes less picky. So, I'm gonna keep it right around here, and that's looking good. Now, I want the same effect to be applied to the, the sky, so I'm gonna click here. I'm, I notice that if I click, my temperature is at plus eight, so I'm gonna remember that now. I'm gonna click new, and again, I'm gonna reset, open up the exposure, and then this time, I want to, I'm gonna flip it so that it's only applying to the sky, so above the horizon bring it down a little bit. Again, let's reset everything. Let's bring the temperature to eight. And again, just to show you, if I click on the other mask, the temperature was eight. So it's just giving me the same value. So now the warm effect is applied up here, but just like before, I don't want to have that warming applied to the blue sky. So I select color from the range mask and I'm going to click and shift click on certain areas of the sky. And like before, I can take my mount slider just to show you, if I bring it to the left, it has one type of effect in terms of how much color is being selected. As you go to the right, it selects more of that color. So I'm gonna bring it down here. 
Now, I want to bring out some of that blue again. So we're done here with this, the uh, graduated filter. And I'm going to scroll down to my huge saturation and luminance. I'm going to take the target adjustment tool for saturation. And basically what this does is uh, anywhere you hover that tool, you can see, watch as I move around, look at, the, look at the colors over here. You see how they change basically to select whichever color it lands on. So I'm going to go to the blue over here. And I'm going to click and drag up and you see how that brings out some of that blue and same thing kind of here. Let's increase that a little bit. It's a bit too much. Let's drag it down just a bit. And then with the luminance, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go here. Let's darken that blue just a tiny bit to add a little bit of some nice contrast. And you can see this really nice gradient. It's a color gradient or a temperature gradient going from the cool on the left, warm on the right. And again, this is the thing where when uh, photographers are like, of course, I want to shoot at sunrise or sunset when the, the light is beautiful and the conditions are wonderful. But uh, really, the fact of the matter is I want to shoot whenever I possibly can. That, to me, is the answer that a photographer should be giving. And it, this was taken, you know, midday. This photo was taken midday. It's really, you know, the conditions were, as far as the lighting conditions were, far from ideal. But I still got out there with my camera and I had a great time. And again, if we just kind of go from before to after, you can get some cool results. And so with that, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit a thumbs up uh, and hit subscribe uh, for more videos. We'll be getting a lot more coming down the road. So uh, and be sure to leave any questions you've got in the comments below. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next one.